Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. We're, we're, we're not number one. God is. God is. We may not be the best, but our purpose, purpose is to lead you to the best. Jesus Christ. Christ. www.RapFestRadio.com. Old school to new school. Classics to exclusives. Gospel, hip-hop, music, and video. Live video interviews Monday nights at 8 p.m. Monday nights at 8 p.m. Watch. 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 Learn. Learn. Love. Love. Support. Support. <laughs> Rap Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. 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 al Dios real y sincero creador de los planetas y de la tierra bella y del mal gigante de la luna y de las estrellas que todo lo que hago señor sea de tu agrado que tu nombre sea alabado eternamente exaltado que tú seas honrado respetado apreciado por los siglos de los siglos que tú seas adorado el Shaddai, el león eres tú el roí el señor es mi pastor yo te adoro solo a ti Jehová Elohim sí yo te alabo a ti por todas las maravillas que tú has hecho en mí Y sigue, que la venga Jehová, todo lo que respire. El Dios altísimo, tu amor grandísimo. Dicen en México que tú eres padrísimo. El Dios chulísimo, el rey bellísimo. Tú eres mi torre fuerte, grande y fuertísimo. El amado carpintero, admirable consejero, mi abogado. El testigo fiel y verdadero, el maestro real, pastor ideal, pastor y guardián. Eres sensacional, Señor. Tú eres tremendo, por eso te represento. Por eso te alabaré, porque tú eres estupendo, tu unción yo la siento tu gozo yo llevo dentro de tu aliento defendo a ti, solo me encomiendo ¡Ey! Y sigue, que alaben a Jehová todo lo que respire. Yo te alabaré, solo en ti yo confiaré. Tú sabes cómo es, solo a Dios te adoraré. Yo vivo por la fe, a Jesús me entregué. A mi Dios yo seguiré, para atrás nunca volveré. Alabaré, alabaré. Welcome, welcome on Monday night here, Rapfest Radio, rapfestradio.com. You just f- finished listening to Joe Le Alaba there by my man Eric E. Brand new video just came out. If you haven't checked him out yet, go to ericemusicnyc.com. I believe that's the site. If not, just Google it or wait till this podcast and you can check it out again. That's Eric E. Joe Le Alaba there. We're here in the building with brother J.L. Escobar of so, Broader Bridges Beyond. He uh, has a powerful ministry slash career that he's working on. 
and we're going to be chopping it up with him tonight. Even before we get to talk to, talking to you, I want to play this quick promo from your ministry, so yeah, that way yeah. it makes it easier for us to lead right into it. So check this out. We'll be right back. I want you to think of how many different type of resumes there are. And then I want you to tell me which one you think an employer prefers out of those. Beyond is a project of Broader Bridges. Uh, the goal of the initiative is to empower the faith and community-based organizations that work with young people every day. I think it'll be a wonderful, great uh, networking event first, you know, just to come across other people in this field who work with young adults who, who want to help the young people. And I just think the, the more resources we have out there, the more people doing the same thing, the better results we can get. I'm really appreciative of what JL is doing through Broader Bridges because I need that network. You know, I, I may be real good at knowing the, the juvenile justice system with young people, but I don't have the time to stay up on the cutting edge of which are the best workforce programs, which are the best internship programs. You know, I encourage you guys to stay connected to the network. I know we're staying connected to it just because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lifeline for us. I had a million questions in reference to where would I send a kid that's having this kind of issue. And he had quite a few um, sources um, for all types of scenarios. I think anyone that works with urban youth, um, in fact, anyone that works with urban communities, the catalyst is young people, but we can reconnect adults. We can reconnect male, female. Uh, anyone who's disconnected should be reconnected, and that's the whole purpose of the, of the training. You're listening to Rapfest Radio on rapfestradio.com. Yo, we are back on Rapfest Radio, rapfestradio.com. Yeah, this yeah, God bless it. That's a nice way to come back. We should have both just done like improv, that. Yeah. Improv, improv, improv. Um, the B-boy stands. <laughs> the B-boy stands. Representing the BX for the Yankees today. Yankees gonna win game three. Come on, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, the game starts at 8.30, so we still got some time before the game starts. And if there's a score happening, we'll update you. We'll let you know what's going on. Uh, Brother J.L. Escobar is here. We just played the promo video from yeah. your company. So why don't you take a little, you know, your own little presentation of this is who I am, this is my company, and then we'll chop it up. Well, like I was telling you, the promo really tells you everything in a really short time. All right, we're done. Join us <laughs> next week. <laughs> um, but uh, there's tons of more information on the website, um, broaderbridges.org. One of the things that I really wanted to emphasize was, uh, you know, our goal uh, through our Beyond Project is to equip and mobilize faith communities to address the crisis of disconnected youth. And disconnected youth basically means out-of-work, out-of-school youth. Right. In New York City, is nearly 300,000 of them. Wow. Let's yeah. let's let's go back a little bit. Broader Bridges. What's Broader Bridges? Well, I the, the name actually has evolved since I started it. I started doing some career coaching pro bono in two thousand and three because I was working with the welfare the work population as my nine to five. Oh okay. Yeah, workforce professional for ten years now, since two thousand one. Wow. So a little over ten years and uh, really fortunate to start in the field, you know, early and get a lot of experience at a relatively young age. Um but my heart just, you know, just sunk as I seen the, the individuals that came through our doors, all kind of, you know, poverty issues and all kind of drug abuse issues and, and just all kind of low social economics, you know. I know this is probably not the language that most hip hop heads are used to hearing, but I'm a hip hop head and still know the flip side on the on the workforce end and the majority of them were black and brown people, you know, and as um, you know, as a person of color, as a man of color, it just really bothered me that, you know, the majority of the welfare to work roles were us. Mm. They were disconnected from so many um, areas of success. And um, when you try to teach them, if anybody's ever been in the field, they'll tell you some of the hardest people to teach are adult learners, one, but two, that come from the welfare to work population. Right. Uh, because it's usually not welfare to work, at least that's not the mentality. The mentality is usually welfare to welfare. So I'll jump Just on stay one. there? Yeah. How can I figure out to stay on, you know, on my benefits? So there's, there's not, many don't seek you know, self-sufficiency. A lot do, but um, the large majority that I worked with in my own experience, you know, for over a decade, a lot of them were just trying to figure out how to extend 
their SSI or their you know their public assistance, uh, and they just became very crafty with it. They knew mm. how to work the, the system. The system. Yeah. yeah, and and I mean you know for all the time that they worked learning the system, they could have had a master's degree in business, you know just mm. just a masterful at it. But what I realized was that they were very resistant to change, and that uh, they were not even trying to change in many cases. So I started really thinking to myself about reaching them when they were younger, before they get to this point, before they're okay. adult, you know, that's in, in the welfare roles or in the prison system and just stuck on this, on this dependency. And uh, there was so much uh, need that I just started to go out and do career coaching at, you know, city year, churches, community centers, and um, it evolved over time. It evolved over time. I started that in all three. And uh, by 08, we officially incorporated it. Uh, at that time, I was going under Seekers, Inc. because it was short for Job Seekers. Oh, okay. But the problem with that is, as you know, uh, Wendy and her group had the Christian Fellowship uh, Seekers right, she, Club, right. which are known for short as Seekers. Oh, yeah. so, so, so there was always a, a The names, yeah, confusion, right, right, that happens. So so we shifted and we thought, well, our goal is always to broaden the bridges that are already in the community, the church, the community center, you know, the the uh, non-profit that's there to serve the people in those areas, in those neighborhoods. So we started thinking, well, what can we do as far as a name that's, one, catchy, and two, makes sense? And um, I remember coming across Learning Leaders. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Work with I, the Board of Education. Right, right, right. So I just loved the way the double L's worked. I just loved the way the name was really easy to remember. And I said, wait a minute, that's it right there. We, you know, we want to broaden you know, these existing bridges in the, in the communities that a lot of our young people are affected in, urban communities, as they know. So we just named it Broader Bridges, and that's that's the goal. To, you know, if you're a bridge, whether it's a spiritual bridge, you know, a, a community bridge, we, we want to go in there and equip you to be able to do more when a young person comes to you looking for work or looking to get back into school. Wow. So it's, it's more than just like a job placement agency. Yeah, it's much more. In fact, the focus is not even on job placement as much as it is job training and career paths because one of the things we see especially with a lot of job trainings what happens is you you place a young person in a job relatively quickly mcdonald's retail something to that effect and that young person doesn't really build experience in a career field or with a job that kind of can lend itself to growing and promoting right so we recommend put a hold on that you know, take a training anywhere between three to a year worth of training, depending on, of course, the kind of career the young person want to go after. Um, but that 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 yields much more in terms of long term success. You keeping and and uh, getting and keeping the job. Right. Sacrifice this six to nine months, a year, right. whatever. Learn something, right. and then move on. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm getting a question already here. Why do you think minority youth, even Christians, have that welfare mentality of you know? Going from welfare to welfare, like you were saying before. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Again, it's not everyone. Right. But, um, we've been set up for failure, right? Everything from slavery has played a role in that. Um, the low social economics that we come from, the cycle of poverty, um, the lack of educational attainment. All those things are factors in why people become disconnected. In fact, I just talked about this at Movement Day. There's going to there's gonna take a lot of things to reconnect young people in urban communities because there's a lot of things disconnecting them in the first place. Mm. So there's a disparity among, of course, black and Latino youth versus white and Asian youth, uh, both in education, uh, incarceration rates, fatherlessness. All these things play a major role. Eighty plus percent of inmates come from fatherless homes. Sixty five plus percent of teenage moms, fatherless homes. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on as right. far as the reasons why people are disconnected and, you know, have these dependency issues. So it's going to take an intentional effort on behalf of not just the faith community, but the community in general to really start redirecting these paths and say, no, it's not okay to be on welfare. I know growing up in the South Bronx, a kid from a Puerto Rican home, BX. you know what I mean? <laughs> um, it, it was really, um, it was really all I saw. Nobody went to college. Nobody, you know, um, you know, had the work ethic of getting up every morning and going to work. What I saw was, you know, a lot of dependency. You know, when uh, my family members got old enough, they got off of their mother or parents' case and opened up their own case. You know, so the dynamics right, and the right, paradigm right. were so different than a, a white family that was setting up that young person for college from very early on. You know, it's not even an option. It's not right. even a second thought for, you right, know, right. a Absolutely. Caucasian youth yeah, to and, go to and, college. And it's like you said, it's not everybody. Because, yeah. there are, again, there, there are many successful minority 
you know, Absolutely. groups that have that have been able to make it through because they had either the the wise grandparent or the wise mother that you know looked for their children's future and wasn't right. raised in a certain way. Right. You know, which which makes a big difference. And it's true, you know. Uh, and some people are probably watching right now. Say, yo, isn't this Rap Fest Radio? Who's this dude? Is he a rapper or whatever? Nah. You know, we're about building the kingdom. You know, and. Yeah, we want you to meet artists. We want you to, to know what artists do and where they're going to be performing, how you can get their music. But we also want to help you. If we're not offering you help, you know, we're going to be just strictly entertainment. And, yeah. you know, I don't mind doing that. But at the same time, you know, I have teenage kids as well. I need them to, to learn things, you know. And I want the youth in our church to learn stuff as well. You know, so I think it's, it's really important. Uh, this have a question. I have a question coming in, and this might tie into my next question because I want to ask about what church you attend and, and what involvement you have in your church. And then this question here says, "Do you think the church plays a role in this mindset?" I think the church can play a role in changing the mindset. It mm. really does depend what church, right? Every church is different depending on the culture of the church, um, the demographics of that church. If it's a predominantly Spanish church versus a predominantly Black church, there's a lot of different, um, you know churches as far as denominations and, and their view on community work. and uh, So that's a hard question to answer, but mm. I think that some some churches can either enable it or, or change it dramatically on the positive end. Um, you know, I, um, I got saved when I was about 16, 17 years old, so uh, I've seen a lot of different church ministry and outreach and um, have been active myself. Um, so, you know, some churches really do... Um, community work. Other churches just go out and get tracks. And again, I'm, I'm not against tracks, I'm Absolutely not against right. prayer, but I believe that we have to be doers and that you have to put your faith in action. And that means that you don't just give a track, but you give, you know, um, a clothing voucher or a referral or, you know, an opportunity for a training or say, hey, we can connect you with this organization we partner with to get you a job or get you a job training or get you some housing. Right. I can't tell you how many youth workers that we've come across that, you know, when they're faced with a young person that's out of work and out of school. They go to their youth pastor, you know, to the extent that the youth pastor can help them, they do. But usually that means let's pray. And we're all for prayer, but we want to teach that young person and that youth worker how to go beyond the prayer and say, okay, now that we finished praying, let's figure out, let's do a little bit of assessment. Let's do some Q&A and figure out right. where we can send you, where we can partner with an organization to get you the services you need. And a lot of times that's what's lacking. We go to all these conferences and we got all these great events and we're really, really churchy when it comes to those things. And that's been our challenge because we're not, you know, a sexy ministry in that respect that right. we don't bring music and, you know, all this entertainment right, factor. Right, right. We're bringing tools, resources, you know, we're bringing... You're uh, sending people to work. Uh, yeah, we're, we're sending people <laughs> to work, back to school. And, you know, a lot of times that's not flashy, but right. it's so needed. It's so it's vital. reality. Yeah. It's yeah. reality. Yeah. Especially nowadays, the way the economy is, you know... A lot of people out of work, for, yeah. you know, for a long time. All all races, all ages, all backgrounds and stuff. Uh, so what church do you fellowship at? I, I fellowship at Promised Land Church here in the Bronx. Oh, Pastor Mike Carrion. Mike yeah. Carrion. Yeah, I don't know why we say Reverend Carrion. Mike Everybody Carrion. says Carrion. It's, it's Mike Carrion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's my mentor. That's my pastor. That's, you know. My uh, padrino, as, as we jokingly <laughs> say amongst ourselves. No, but that's good, man. Uh, Mike, Promised Land Church, you guys probably familiar with it. We, we had a Rap Fest concert series there once a couple of years back. We have some video footage up on YouTube.com slash Rap Fest videos. You see some freestyle stuff all from Promised Land Church. Much props to yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's doing big things over there as yeah, well. Yeah, huge things, man. Uh, Planting like five to eight churches over the next couple of years. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's really um, influential in the covenant church movement and uh, you know just doing some great work there at 138 in Cyprus. So much so that we're going to two services now because the oh, first wow. service is just packed out. Really? Yeah. And I thought that place was pretty big, actually. It is, and we're packed out. I mean, I've been putting up the pictures on Facebook. I mean, look for yourselves. I mean, I'm just <laughs> thankful for the, for the growth, man. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, so what is, the, what is the church's reaction to your, I don't know what you, do you consider this a ministry or do you consider it I mean, a career? Amongst, it's a combination or what is it? Broader Bridge is a nonprofit organization. Okay. Right? But... Beyond its its faith based initiative, so Beyond stands for Believers Employment Opportunities Network, or Beyond for short, 
And we created that to, again, equip and empower faith communities to do something about this unemployment rate, not only among young people, but among their congregants and their community members. Right. So that initiative is faith-based. Um, you know, amongst believers, of course, we look at that as ministry, and it is ministry. Uh, in fact, you know, our fiscal sponsor is my church, Promised Land Church. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of ties in the faith community. But part of the reason why we intentionally made it a nonprofit organization, not a ministry, is because we wanted to be able to reach across the aisle, if you would, to the secular community-based organizations right. that are out there to create that linkage mm. between the church and, and these partners. Because a lot of times that's where that separation lies. It's no reason why a youth worker should not have some great contacts like Elias at Workforce One right. or like some other great you know, professionals that I know in various job readiness training programs in community boards, um, you know, in workforce investment um, boards. I mean, there's so many opportunities out there that a lot of times there's that disconnect. So we've been trying to be that middleman, that bridge to mm. say, okay, here are these two parties that clearly are both invested in young people and if they work together they can really you know create some catalytic change not just regular change i mean real long lasting change hey man change change is important for many people many people are stuck in a i don't know what you want to call it they're just stuck they they, they can't seem stagnant. to get out of it they're stagnant yeah. they i'm trying everything i can't change this i can't change it and the harder they try the more stuck they feel you know yeah. and you know that's why we're, we're excited for broader bridges i want to play this music video it's not it's not him rapping, no, don't worry, don't <laughs> be scared. I'm going to get my Yankee fitted so I can look like Yeah, 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 like you're rapping. But um, at the same time, talking of change, uh, y'all know C-Light, C-Light, Sinuswax, Sinuswax.com, yeah. we're rocking the shirt today. He recently got signed to Reach Records, which we're excited for. We, you know, we applaud yeah. him. We're looking for, you know, all the projects to come out. He has a new mixtape that's available at formerlyknown.me, that's formerlyknown.me. And what I want to do right now is play this video clip. By Andy Minio, that's his name now. Andy Minio, Globalized no longer C Light. Yeah, it's real. Uh, so that's a change. Yeah. Talk about change. Mm -hmm. And the song is called Formerly Known. Check it out right here, FS Radio. If you have any questions, hit up the chat room. Let us know. We'll be right back. Yeah. Everybody wanna be heard, everybody wanna be seen, everybody wanna be known, and everybody got some dreams. We wanna be understood, not overlooked. And when we fall, who gon' carry us? Underwood, we need love and affection, time and attention, affirmation, acceptance, someone to give direction, set apart from the rest. And we wanna stand distinguished and be the cool kid like you, Chuck English. Been on a quest for this ever since Genesis, but settling for fool's gold instead of what the treasure is. Chasing after numbers, yo, this must have been our exodus. We don't want no Jesus unless he's checking. Then on our necklace, he is Maybe for the moment I was born I'm not an accident or a clone, yeah The one that made me gain the purpose Now I don't gotta go in my searching Yeah, that was just a short teaser by Andy Minio called Formerly Known. Uh, you can check out his brand new mixtape available for free. Absolutely zero dollars by going to formerlyknown.me and you can download it. I think you got about 15, 16 tracks. Wow. Some dope stuff. You know, he's showing some new character in, in, in his music and stuff. And we're going to see how his whole ministry develops now that he's with Reach Records. Uh, much props to him. Yo, uh, so before the, before the break, we started talking about the church a bit, yeah. you know, and I know you, you're sponsored by, by Promised Land Church, which is the church you attend with Pastor Mike. Uh, what, how do the churches reach out to you or how do you reach to the churches? Like, do you, do you knock on church doors and say, hey, your youth ain't working. We need to hook you up. Dude. Or do you do a, is there a survey that goes out? Like what, how does that work? Right now, a lot of it has been. Uh, happening through the web and through some of the exposure that we've been really fortunate to receive. We were just in the September issue of the Love Express. Um, and they did a two-page spread on us, so we were really blessed you know, to get that kind of exposure, the largest Christian newspaper 
in the tri-state. So oh, shout out to Eat the Strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Love Express and the whole the whole Love Express team. But uh, so they they got the link uh, up on our website. Uh, if you go to the website and you want to join the Believers Employment Network, uh, there's a simple kind of form that you fill out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's free. Well, one of the things that we looked at initially is doing like a membership thing where you have to pay, and then we just said scratch that. That's not going to work. Churches don't, you know, a lot of times don't even get the, the value of the service, you know. Uh, with all due respect, a lot of them just didn't. Uh, and we knocked, we knocked on tons of doors initially. And uh, I would say 8 to 10% of them would say yes. The majority really? of them closed their doors. Like, what's the, what is, what's the, what's stopping them? What happens is a lot of times uh, when we would go into, you know, these churches and reach out to uh, the leadership, a lot of times they would not get Again, because it's not really flashy and it doesn't have a lot of ministry uh, per se, you know, kind of look to it. They didn't get it. A lot of times they would say, well, when, when's the prayer? You know, when when are we going to put the worship music on? We go, that, that's not that's not how it works. Right, right. Uh, the way it works is we come in, we, we, we help your youth worker, we equip them, we give them tools, resources. And the churches that were really progressive got it. They go, oh, okay, I see. This is, this is what we can do beyond the prayer. This is what we can do to put some tangible resources and tools in the hands of our out-of-work youth. And then it, they started realizing that these young people are going to be their future titles. These are your future congregants. These are your future leaders. So right. it's important that you invest in them now. Not only that, we started getting a lot of, um, a lot of requests from the, the adult membership. And um, you know, one of the things that they realized was what we're doing with young people in terms of our work can also be replicated to serve adults. Hmm. So um, they, they started becoming more and more interested when uh, when that happened. But it took some progressive churches initially to jump on board, including Promised Land, Harvest Field, uh, Christ Tabernacle out in Queens. They're actually <clears throat> hosting our next Reconnect, uh, nice. which is coming up uh, this month. Yeah, so tell us about this Reconnect, because I, I know I was looking through your site as well. I saw right. some older flyers that were up there yeah. of the Reconnect. So maybe somebody out there might want to say, yo, I want to be down. What, what do I do? Yeah, so Reconnect, right, the, the whole theme and the name of it, um, it speaks for itself. These young people are disconnected. Right, and that's the term that's been given to them by sociologists, by the cities, actually using that term in the official language. Right. And when you say disconnected youth, anyone in the sector knows that means this young person's out of work and out of school. It's both. It's not like they're working and, and not schooling or schooling and not working. They're These are your people that are doing nothing. And you know that old saying, right? Out of mind. It's the devil's right. play shop. So we always we encourage youth workers, like, you want to keep your young people engaged on a positive level. And you can't do that through church 24-7, right. right? So you want to be able to give them a healthy place to do that. So reconnect, uh, that was the theme. And, and I kind of got inspired by Reload, you know, the whole big Reload right. that, that's done almost every year out here by Larry Acosta and his team. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be a Reload this past year. And it really inspired me to get as many youth workers, clergy, parents, uh, young people, job seekers in the same room and say, okay, here's what's missing to start reconnecting these young people and start reconnecting our communities. So we started coaching them around job interviewing, started coaching them around resume writing, started giving them the leads to the Workforce One centers, to these free job placement services. Um, a lot of times giving them job leads directly. So really reconnect is just a hub of just that, job leads, job resources, job tools. And it's a one-day conference that we hold. We're doing a five-borough tour. So we did the Bronx and in, in, um, in Brooklyn first. And it's uh, going to be Queens this month, followed by uh, Staten Island and Manhattan in November. So we got our hands full with it. Yeah, I but, see. But uh, it's a really good conference if you want to get your hands on, you know, these, these kind of services. So what's, what's the difference then between the broader bridges, Beyond, and Reconnect? and a place like a Workforce One? Well, one, we come to you, right? So um, all of the trainings that we've done uh, are at the borough that we're, that we're doing it in, um, whether it's a church um, like uh, Promised Land or whether it's a CDC, uh, Community Development Corporation, which the Legacy Center is the one hosting us. And the Legacy Center is the CDC of Christ Tabernacle. Oh, okay. Right. So um, CCFY has been, you know, a part and a sponsor to us. They're, they're a, a nonprofit organization in the Bronx that focuses on mentorship. We've had World Vision sponsor us. Uh, we've had um, Naya College. So there's a lot of ties to the faith community, unlike right. Workforce One, which really doesn't have a lot of ties to the faith community. Uh, and again, we act as that bridge between the church and the organizations out there like Workforce One. 
right. to try to unite these two worlds um, for the purpose of reconnecting young people and, and of course, congregants. One of the things we notice um, that, that's majorly different about us is, one, I'm sensitive to the needs of the faith community because I'm coming from the faith community. Um, and reconnect is just, you know, that kind of conference where people can just come, you know, from all over and participate. Broader Bridge is just the overall umbrella organization. Right. And Beyond, again, is that, that faith-based initiative that we started to try to create a network, literally, of churches and organizations that come together to share resources. And if you look at most church networks, it's between the church and other churches. This one, we wanted to make it intentionally different, where it's churches along with community partners. Right. Yeah. Even if they were secular, because, again, the goal wasn't religious. The goal was practical. Let's get these young people back to work. Resources. Let's get them back to school. Yeah. Absolutely. That sounds, that sounds good, man. Uh, it does sound like you have your hands full, by the way. <laughs> I do, man. It sounds like a lot of work. I mean, you have... Thank to, God we've been able to do it. Is the organization big? I mean, I know you said you just started a few years ago, yeah. but... Yeah, we're grassroots, man. Is it's, it just you? It's me and about six board members. Okay. Five or six board members. Uh, so it's a nice, good team of us. And the, the board is predominantly, you know, uh, black and Latinos that are professionals, um, that want to give back. In fact, we have uh, two young people on our board that are in the same age range of the of the young people we serve. Oh, so, so Will is twenty three, Kimberly's twenty two. You know, so it's hands on. Yeah, they're you, there. They know the the, the population. They're not guinea pigs, are they? No, not at all. <laughs> Go they're to the very bright. You they're okay. very bright. Right. I mean, Will, you know, uh, ex military. You know, uh, works with the New York Leadership Foundation. Kimberly right. just got her master's degree. I mean, these young people are, you know, they're they're they're, they're quite impressive. That's good. Yo, I mean, this guy has a lot of information and resources. Churches, if you're out there, we encourage you to go to broaderbridges.org and click on contact us and send them any information. Maybe they could get involved with your upcoming events that you have. You want to bring them in. Maybe I don't know. Just figure something out. We're going to talk about more how you can get involved with uh, Broader Bridges and support them or have them come out to your neighborhood, your church, whatever it is, to, you know, to connect the disconnected. I want to jump into another video, Get Your Weight Up by K-Drama here at RapFest Radio, RapFestRadio.com. Then we're going to come back and find out some information about this thing called Por Que. Yeah, Por Que. All right, check it out. Got to get my weight up on this track. Can't keep lifting these little dumbbells. <laughs> yeah. Try to be a heavyweight, you know what I'm saying? Put some more weight on that bar, What do you think that means? <laughs> Let's do this. Hey. If pain is weakness, leave in the body, then I cry every black night. Trying to get my act right, trying to get my pack tight. That might be the reason why I lost the last fight. Cause I couldn't recall word of the one I'm trying to act like. People want to act like they don't want to feel me. Like everyone is chiseled. I got to bring the real me, the stretch marks, the ill me, the sinful, the filthy. Ain't what you expect to get a refund. Feel me. With the body looking sluggish, Christian rappers want to thug it. Christians pull the scene every time they flesh is tugging. Anyone living? Holy. Sound familiar? What happened to being different? I thought we were peculiar, but folk can't tell the difference. We do the same things they do. The surface so temporal. Eternal was Jesus. We need discipline. Gotta start resistance it. Wanna carry your cross? Then you gotta get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it. 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 Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it. 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 I got the top trainer. Day day in my corner. Strategy on my mind. Leave them to the coroner. They think I'm shadow boxing. The crowd starts mocking. Not seeing my fight, even though they are watching. But they aren't paying attention. We don't fight against flesh. This slugfest ain't easy for me to pass. I'm like a duck test, cause this mess I'm attracted to. But I'm trying to kind of act it through. Seems like in the day I'm acting good. Then I come straight out the blue. Acting in the spirit, I used to. 
used to look puny. A scrub in the ER, like George Clooney. Suffering from malnourishment and dehydration. I didn't live for Jesus, I lived for this sensation. But that really depressed me. Empty's how it left me. Because it's so short lived, now it doesn't impress me. I live for what's eternal. I live life on the bench press. Cause muscles don't come without resistance. So get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. You can do it, 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 get your weight up, get your weight up, get your weight up, get your weight up, you can do it, 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 it's easier to resist. And that doesn't mean much You wouldn't do it no way Because that's not your lust But what's the thing that come peace with Jesus For your heart The sin that attracts you Ranks highest on your chart Trust me, I've been there Sometimes I'm still there I overcome sin But still have to peel layers Of deep-rooted wrongdoing So frustrating I love God But I wish it showed in my patience Cause that's where the power comes That's where the peace comes That's where the fulfillment comes That's where the peace comes when you start working out your salvation With fear and trembling, call it formation So let's up the ante, sin no longer amps me Gotta read the manual, his word does the clamping When I press towards God, I press away sin Sin is the weight and I'm bench pressing Get your weight up, get your weight up Get your weight up, get your weight up You can do it, you can do it You're listening to Rap Fest Radio on RapFestRadio.com. Yes, we are back. Rap Fest Radio, RapFestRadio.com. Thanks for joining us tonight. J.L. Escobar of Broader Bridges and Beyond is here in the house. Uh, we just finished listening to K-Drama, Get Your Weight Up. Much thanks for the videos, guys. If you have music and videos you want to play it on Rapfest Radio, just hit us up, rapfestradio at gmail.com, or text us, 805-RAPFEST, that's 805-727-3378, or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. You know how to find us. Um, yo, uh, right before the video, I said we wanted to talk about something else that you're doing. Yeah. It's called Porque. So, why? Tell us about it. <laughs> so, Porque is uh, a social media awareness campaign that we started. And we started it because we found uh, this really interesting report startling, like we couldn't believe it. Uh, CSS, Community Service Society, uh, released a report around this same time last year. So it's very recent, and they looked over the last four to six years or so. And uh, anytime you look at policy reports, it's important to know that it's it's been a couple of years, because statistics can vary year to year. But if you get right. a consistent number over a span of years, it tends to be really legit. Long story short, the CSS report was called... Um, Latinos in New York City, uh, and they found that uh, Latinos make up uh, make up the large majority of adults under the age of 25 uh, in New York City. They also found that young adults 16 to 24, and particularly that were from Latino groups, uh, were uh, disadvantaged and disconnected at a proportionally higher rate than uh, white and, and Asian counterparts in the same school system in the same communities here in New York City. Mm. And this is across the five boroughs. Mm. So this is an awareness, is it a campaign? Yeah, it is an awareness campaign and we figured what better awareness campaign than online, right? So we started tweeting about it, we started Facebooking it, and anybody who follows me on Twitter or Facebook knows where me, you know, me and my team are on there all the time, putting up job leads, putting up resources, putting up things like this, the Porque Awareness Campaign, and just try to create some exposure. Because people in the field knew about it, you know? Right. But everyday Latinos didn't know. And uh, what was really startling as a Puerto Rican man, I really found this troubling. They found that out of all the Latino groups, and they looked at Dominicans, they looked at Mexicans, they looked at Puerto Ricans as the three major subgroups 
under this Latino report. And of course, they looked at some of the other smaller in number Latino groups, but Puerto Rican males in particular stood out above the rest mm -hmm. for a very, um, very dangerous statistic. They found that they had the highest number of disconnection in terms of being out of school and being out of work more than any other racial group and any other Latino group, period. Wow. So Puerto Rican males, 16 and 24, are literally the most disconnected young person in New York City. So now we're going to tie this into the church because living in New York, in the Bronx, where we're at, you know, there are many churches out there with youth groups. And their youth groups are, let's say if it's a teenager, you know, or consider really youth are to 18, young adults, what, 20 to 35 years old. Yeah. These are the kids we're talking about. Yeah, disconnected youth turn into disconnected adults. And at the end of the Those day... Those are scary, that's scary a, statistics. They, they really are. They really are. And, you know, we always put up the links to the reports because we don't want people to think we're just making these numbers up. Right. You know, uh, porque, if you're out there and you're listening, please... Facebook it, tweet it. The link is on my page. It's on our website. We got to get people to know about this because the more people know about it, the more we can do something about it. The problem right. is when a crisis like this happens and not enough voices are raised, it kind of goes under the radar and nobody does anything about it. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, and it, it, it is all awareness because, yeah. you know, and let's, let's face it. It's not that people, well, people don't know about the resources because they're not really looking for them. Yeah. But people are very aware of the fact that there's an issue. Yeah. You know, that there's problems. You know, many times you'll 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 go to a church and you'll see a youth group and you'll like these kids don't really like I you know, and I'm and not not stereotyping anything because I've been to concerts when we were back in the days when we were rapping with the whole group, we would go out and rap yeah. and I have a box of CDs to sell and I would look at the kids and I'm like, I gotta just give them CDs. You know, they're not gonna buy it. Right. You know, like you could tell these kids aren't working, maybe we're just judging them, but you know, or maybe they just played us and they got free CDs but I'm like <laughs> you know we got to give it to them but but what is the importance of this whole broader bridges porque uh beyond how does how does that going to tie into the youth today you know leading towards other ministries right. you know I'm, I'm bringing right. it back to the church now right I mean one of the things that um that's in the Love Express piece is the fact that these disconnected youth are not just the ones in the street corner but they're the ones in the pews and that they're not just black and Latino kids that you know have no future these are the tomorrow's leaders these are tomorrow's congregants these are tomorrow's community stakeholders and if we don't equip them today then all of those potential leaders congregants community members are not, not going to be set up for success. right? And the chances of them being involved in the community and being involved in your church, being involved in a progressive way, really get shot. So you want to set them up now so that they're not disconnected later. And then the church will suffer, the community will suffer because these are leaders that could have really went the other way. I right. mean, in my case in particular, um, I lost both my parents by the age of 10. I was already set up for, you know, for, for disaster. I was already supposed to be another statistic. By 15, I was arrested. By 16, I dropped out. I was going nowhere fast. It took my pastor. It took my PO. Yes, my probation officer, <laughs> right? And other adults to care enough to redirect my path, to give me those resources, to give me that nice. encouragement, to mentor me, to say, hey, you, if you're still young enough to get back on track. Right. And by 17, I got my GED. By 18, I was accepted into college, first person ever in my family to go to college. Wow. And the trajectory of my life totally changed because enough adults cared. It wasn't about policies. It wasn't about funds. It wasn't about programs. It was about enough adults caring and then mm. doing something about it. Yeah. So this is my story. The reason why I'm so passionate about working with disconnected youth is because I was that disconnected youth. And I know if it wasn't for people caring, not only in the faith community, but in the community in general, I would have still been disconnected. I would have been like my brother in and out of jail. Um, you know, so that's a, that's, a, that's a whole other story. But <laughs> even to this day, he's been in and out of jail consistently for the last 15 years. Same wow. household, same setup. But I had enough people that cared and listened to them. And it changed my outcome. Wow. I mean, and, and it's true. that there, there's, there's opportunities out there. And sometimes yeah. you do need that one person to say, yo, Jay, you can do this, man. Yeah. You know, and, and keep on top of you, accountability with the right people as right. well, right. which makes a big difference. So to all the pastors that are out there and, and youth pastors and, and church leaders and, you know, I don't know how we could tie this into maybe even artists that are watching. Yeah. What 
what can we do to to get them involved? I mean, artists have a huge influence in in the same you know population we're talking about disconnected youth, sixteen to twenty four especially. That's you know that's their market. Uh, Andy Mino is a perfect example of that. I've been talking to Andy about our work way back a couple of years ago. Um, before he was with Reach Records, you know, before uh, this incredible... Before people knew who he yeah, was. <laughs> you know, and, and God bless him, I'm so happy right. for his success. Uh, but he was always like, man, I love what you're doing, that's what's up. And he was always encouraging, you know, when I asked him to promote something or spread the word through his, you know, Facebook or Twitter, you know, he's always willing, uh, whether it's just me stopping by and dropping it on there, him letting it rock, you know, or me sending it to him and him posting it, that's a huge influence, you know. Um, getting the word out there about these disconnected Latino youth, disconnected youth in general, just by simply tweeting, Facebooking. I mean, it, it, it's just a you know, stroke of a key, and you can help you know, change this trend. But we have to get Latinos and leaders in the faith and community to be outraged. And let's face it, if this was the, 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 the flip side and this was uh, black youth, I was shocked to be in the street, right. right? Protesting, raising their voice and saying, this is not okay. We need to do the same thing. We need to really mobilize behind us and say it's not okay that Latino youth are disconnected at such a proportionally higher rate, and it's not okay that young people across the board are not getting services and resources. And you know what? We're going to do something about it. We're going to start job clubs. We're going to start, you know, going to these reconnect conferences. We're going to get, you know, equipped to the point where we can go beyond the prayer and say now we're going to connect you to this training. We're going to connect you mm -hmm. to the schooling. We're going to connect you to this job. But we're going to do something. We're going to be doers. We're not just going to talk about it. We're not just going to pray about it. We're going to move past that into action. So I would, I would really encourage you, if you're a youth worker, if you're a pastor, a clergy, community leader, get involved. Come out to the conference. Send your young people to the conference. You know, tweet about it. Facebook. I mean, The conferences are generally free? Yeah, the, the next two will be free. Um, the one that we're having in Queens and Staten Island, the one at the end of the year, we're going to have a, a small admission fee just to help cover some of the costs because it's going to be our largest event of the year. But that's October 22nd in, um, in Queens and uh, in November 5th in Staten Island. And this information is on the website, right? All on the website, broaderbridges.org. You can register today. That's the key, though. In order for you to get in for free, you have to register because that's what helps us figure out how many people, how many packages we It'll need, be ready, right, what, right. how many speeding we need, how much food we need. By the way, we food? will have food there. Yeah. Yes, um, breakfast and lunch. I'll be right back. I'm going to go register. Let me get my phone out. <laughs> yeah, register yeah. Now. You got to register. What time RSVP. is the food? What time? <laughs> it's usually a, a, a half day, like 9.30 to 3.30, so we have breakfast around that 9.30 to 10 slot, and then we'll have a lunch around 12, 12.30. I ain't going to front. They treated us pretty well at World Vision that time. Yeah. I was Let there for that something. pastor's uh, morning thing. World Vision has been great to us. They've, not only have they given us sponsorship for food, but they've given us sponsorship to give these incredible giveaways. So all of the, the women, especially, that come to events, they get these Mary Kay bags. And your okay. wife will know about this, Mary Kay. Oh man, they're big fans of that, and they walked away with some incredible, you know, uh, event giveaways. You know, she's gonna make me go to the next one, right? Just for that. <laughs> we also had some for the guys, okay. like colognes, <laughs> aftershave, all that. We just gave it away, and yeah. it was thanks to World Vision, Nyack, um, CCFY, Promised Land Church, uh, Christ Tabernacle with this upcoming one. We're in, we're in talks now with Young Life to sponsor this uh, upcoming uh, Manhattan Reconnect. Okay. So there's a number of people that are really, you know, just jumped in and, and really backed it. And that's what we're able to do for free these next two. Amen. And just, just to clarify for people that are watching, this is not one of those Puerto Rican power, let's go, let's go, <laughs> you know, enough. we've been defeated type stuff and right. we're coming back, we're going to get you type things that we're right, talking right. about, yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, this is really just empowerment for, for, for young people ages 18 to 24. And 16 I, to 24. Oh, 16 to 24. So if you're a junior in high school, whatever, you know, you, you, you're trying to figure out what to do and you need some help, check out Broader Bridges. The same way we had my nephew Eli uh, a couple of weeks back on the air, you know, yeah. check out Unique and, you know, Workforce and stuff like that. Yeah. You have to look. It's, it's not going to come to you. No, it's not. That's, that's the thing. It's yeah. not going to come to you. And maybe you, you feel like, oh, I got this. I know what I'm doing already. That's cool. But you can still check it out. There might be some helpful information there yeah. that will help you. Uh, Maybe the, they're going to love it, the stuff that they'll get at this training that... Believe me, they don't have their hands on this stuff. That do you provide. have Do you have any uh, statistics already for Broader Bridges, like what you've been able to accomplish with people that have come in? Have, have you gotten to that point well, yet? Well, we're actually looking at um, some of the numbers now, but we're waiting to do all five conferences, you know, so we can say over the last year we've been able to train X number of youth workers, clergy, parents, et cetera. Oh, okay. Um, but 
the number uh, is also difficult to quantify because it's not just the reconnects. It's also the job clubs that we're running. It's also the online help that we that we give out. Anybody who follows us on Twitter, just you know, or Facebook, you know, we're always sending our job leads and alerts. God knows who who that helped. So it's just about exposing at the end of the day. Right. But, uh, right. but I'm confident that uh, the number uh, not only is high but it's quality. And uh, I'm confident that it'll continue to grow, you know, especially right. because this last year we've seen so much growth. And uh, like we were talking earlier, it's not an overnight success. We've been chipping away at this for years, and this is the year of breakthrough for us, and we're really thankful for, you know, just everyone who's been supporting us, all of our advisors, you know, all of our sponsors. Hey, man, that's good stuff, man. Again, pastors, youth leaders, youth workers, or just parents, whoever, you're out there, you think you need some help with your career path or... Maybe you're not, not even sure if this fits you. Just go to broaderbridges.org, sign up, tell them to send us some information, you know, chop it up with them. Yep. I'm sure you got a phone number they can call you Absolutely. there. Absolutely. There's the email is on there, the number's on there. You can reach me directly through any of those. Also, our Facebook page, um, October 22nd. Don't miss it. Reconnect Queens, followed by Reconnect Staten Island, November 5th. Hey, man, that's good, man. And let me just announce now before I forget. November 4th is the next bread factory. We're not going to have a bread factory in October because we just had a late bread factory in September. Mm. November 4th is the next bread factory, and we'll have the ministries of Blaze Torch. By the way, much shout-out to Blaze Torch wife. Just had a beautiful baby. Oh, amen, Eric, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, beautiful Congrats. baby. Uh, and also ministering that they'll be New Life from Connecticut. They're going to be coming out. They have some new music to share with us. And we have a special surprise, but I can't say it won't be a surprise. <laughs> But you gotta be there. It's insane. I wish. I really wish I could say. Could I say? I can't say it, right? No, I can't say that. I can't <laughs> lie. We're not gonna lie. But no, we do have a special surprise for November fourth. Bread Factory doors open at seven o'clock. It's a free event. We encourage you to come out. Bring a youth group. Bring your cousins, your uncle, your aunts, everybody that's around you. Just Amen. drag them with you to the church. It's a free event. Fourteen sixty nine St. Peter's Avenue at Sanctuary Fellowship. You definitely want to be there. Any final closing statement, words of encouragement? You want to freestyle rap, whatever you got. Yeah, I got man. the fitted on now, so I can <laughs> spend. No, uh, all jokes aside, if you can't make it out to the reconnect for whatever reason, but you still want to partner with us, we started this great initiative of Community Job Club. Okay. Where we go in and we help the church set up a job club that they run once a month. We're running them in a couple of churches here in the Bronx, and we're in uh, the process of opening up a couple more in Brooklyn. The reason why you keep hearing me bring up the Bronx and Brooklyn is because they have the highest number of disconnected youth. Okay. But we're trying to help it citywide, and that's why we did the Five Borough Tour. But the job club is something you can run once a month. It's for everyone. In fact, the job clubs we've been realizing is a great way for the church to fish. Because, uh, for example, in Harvest Field, Nine out of ten people that come are not from the church. They're from right. the community that found out about this job club and they want to come in and get leads and resources and help with their resumes and their interview and stuff. And it's been you know just a blast to develop that. Big shout out to Pastor Reggie, you know over there in Harvest Hill. They're doing a great job with it, and a couple of other churches that we're working with. But that's a great piece for you to have something internally to direct your members to, to direct your young people to, and to use as a way to say, hey, we're a community church doing community work. If you're not working. Come out. And this is something you guys come out and set up for yeah. them? Yeah, and it's no cost. We come out. The church has to provide two things, the volunteer and the space. And then we equip that volunteer. And, you know, of course, we mobilize a job club on that space, and we show them how to run it. So we usually come out the first one or two job clubs and actually conduct the job club so right. they can model after us. Right, and right. then the, the following ones, they'll take over and we come in and just watch and make sure that we coach and that they're developing kind of the Q&A. But it's really not a difficult thing. It's like running a book club, except it's not about chapters in a book. It's about job yeah, leads, right, resources. Right. And we feed that to the job club. You know, I'm, I'm constantly sending them job leads. Hey, here's the updated resume outline. Hey, here's some new tips for interviewing. You know, we even talked about right, that right, on the right, line. Right, right. So it's about equipping them so they can equip their members. Oh, that sounds good. Yo, definitely, if you want to get involved with that, I mean, it sounds like a great outreach opportunity right there to do something in your community, your neighborhood, your church, the job club. Again, broaderbridges.org is the website with all the information. All of it. Be on the job club, the reconnects, all that's on it. Everything is there. Make sure you click everything. You know, <laughs> don't don't get off the site so you finish reading everything that's there. Uh, definitely connect with Brother Jay. Uh, we thank you again for coming out, thank man. Thank you for having me, man. Dope appreciate having it. you here. We appreciate yeah. it. Congrats. Yeah, Co yep, congr uh, we up to zip. You yeah. Guys been, you guys been updated. Uh, but um, all the information is on the website. Connect. 
with Reconnect, Job Club, Broader Bridges, Beyond. Definitely let your youth pastors know, your pastors know in case they miss this broadcast. It'll also be on podcast, so you can check it out later and tell your friends. Don't forget, Ratfest Radio, we're here every single Monday night from 8 to 9 p.m., ratfestradio.com. You can also join our chat room. We're going to end with a video called My City by our boy, Litro D, little, well, I don't even know how to say his name. <laughs> Literati, Literati. Oh, that's the dude from down south yeah. you told me about. From Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, featuring Jarrell. I probably said his name wrong. He could be real mad. That's okay. <laughs> but I've only met him online texting, so my computer don't talk to me like that. <laughs> The video is called My City. Y'all know the God Belongs in My City, which, by the way, is happening October 29th in the morning. Oh, definitely man. want to check that out. Uh, check out all the God Belongs in My City information online. Yeah. Big if you want shout to be a out part. to them, too. Danny, yeah. Danny sponsored our Reconnect Brooklyn Oh, piece. nice. Big shout out to so God check out, in my City. Uh, Danny, Danny doing so a lot of great stuff yeah. in New York, man. Yeah. Uh, but October 29th is the big walk that they're doing in the Bronx. So you definitely want to check that out. Here's the video, and we're done for today. I want to thank you so much. Rapfest Radio, rapfestradio.com. You will learn us because we are out of control. This is my city.